hair color is my thing, so today I wanted to spend some time with you about how hair color works and kind of show you our brand about hair color and then do some models and have some fun with the hair color. Um, so, we have yellow, red, and blue. Those are our three primary colors and when you mix all three of them together we get brown. And brown lives in the center of the wheel. If we mix two primary colors together, what do we get? Secondary colors, okay, so our blue and red make Violet. very good yellow and red, orange, and blue and yellow, green, right? Mix a primary color and a secondary color together, what do we get? Very good, then we have our blue violets, red violet, red orange, yellow orange, yellow green, and blue green. Notice when I did that, it's not orange red or green yellow, it's because your primary color is always the dominant pigment, okay? So now that we can make a color wheel, how do we use this for hair? Does anybody have any idea? What do we do with it? How do we use it for hair? Mm -hmm. To make your own colors. To make colors? To, uh, what to enhance or what to neutralize? Very good, to either enhance or neutralize. So if I want to neutralize something, how do I do it? What do I do with the wheel? You go with the opposite. Very, very good. You go with the opposite. So what you're saying here, and I kind of want to eliminate the, the red and make it look more natural. I need to have green in my formula. Yes. Right? And if I don't like the hair when it comes out really yellow like a banana. And that's why they make even violet shampoos to help tone. You've seen that in the blonde shampoos? Because it works. Yeah. So they make those kinds of things. And that's what they always taught me to neutralize so when you get out and you start doing hair, one really important thing is to find a color line that makes every one of these bases because some companies don't make all of the bases. A level system is a measurement of depth. One is your darkest shade and ten is your lightest. There's nothing lighter than a ten when it comes to hair. Now I know companies out there make a 12 series, some make a 13 series or an ultra light whatever series, but what they are are translucent tens. There's nothing lighter than a 10. So now I used a word called translucent. You guys understand that word, translucent and opaque. If I have a balloon, like a blue balloon, and it's flat, and I'm holding it up, it's opaque, it's blue. And if I blow air into that balloon and it starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and almost a pop, it's still a blue balloon, but now I can see through it. It becomes more translucent. So these colors that are your 12s and your 13s or whatever they call them from different companies are extremely translucent tins that give the illusion that they're lighter than what they are because you can see through them. They reflect light. So now that we've established that there's 10 levels to hair, when we start coloring hair, we have to consider what is underneath the hair at every single level. Because as hair artists, we don't have the privilege of painting on white. <laughs> That's why if we choose a color out of a color book, it doesn't come out exactly that color, does it? It depends, and if we mix three bowls of the same color, and I put it on you, and I put it on her, and I put it on her, you're all three still gonna have different colors. Even if it's the same color in the bowl, because every one of on my canvas are a different color. So we have to pay attention to what color our canvas is when we're a hairdresser, and we start painting on the hair because we're not painting on a white canvas. So, if you talk about the levels, if you could see through the hair before you even put uh, something that removes hair color, because if you put something on hair like bleach, or peroxide, or lemon juice, or sun in, or any of the things that start to remove the pigment from the hair and lighten the hair, what color does the hair turn with those things? If I put bleach on your hair, what color is it gonna turn? Orange. Right? <laughs> Every single time. It makes me laugh when I have clients that come to the salon and say, Oh, Max, just so you know, my hair has a tendency to turn a little bit orange. Really? <laughs> anybody with a tendency to turn natural? In my whole life, in 30 years of doing hair, I've never seen anybody turn natural with bleach. Right? It's never going to happen. She thinks it's just her hair, but it's not just her hair. It's everybody's hair. So it always makes me laugh. Oh, it's going to turn orange, Max. Oh, really? No. <laughs> I'd love to see it turn brown, but it's not going to happen. So if you can see through the hair, 
before you even put a remover on the hair, the hair is actually blue underneath at level one. Level two blue violet, three violet, four red violet, five red, six red orange, seven orange, eight yellow orange, nine yellow, and ten is a really pale yellow, like the inside of a banana. And learn because it's never going to go away. And it's the law of hair color. It will never change. So if you understand, if a client, see, I used to not like pictures. Because when I first graduated from school, someone brought me a picture. I didn't know if I could make that exact color. So I'd always just say, well, with your hair in this picture, I'll go right in between. It'll be the perfect shade for you. Because <laughs> then they wouldn't say, well, it's not exactly like the picture, Max. Now I actually prefer a picture because I know what they're talking about. Because some people, if someone comes in and says they want auburn hair, what you think is auburn and she thinks is auburn and she thinks is auburn are all three different colors. But if they have a picture and they show it to me, I know what they call auburn and I know what they want. And then I can look at the picture and I say, okay, that to me looks like a level four copper. Now I know what she wants. But the most important thing is what level the client wants to be. So when a client comes to me with a picture, before I even look at the color or the tonal value of the picture, I look at what level that picture is. How light or dark do they want to be? Because if that picture is about a level seven, I know today, no matter what I do, I'm painting on orange. Does she want orange hair or not? But I know no matter what I do, my canvas is orange today. And it's about a level five, I know today I'm painting on red. Do they want red hair or not? But at least I know what color my canvas is. I've been doing hair for so many years. My last salon on Ventura Boulevard, we, I had 38 employees there. And um, it was a huge project. And half of them called themselves color specialists. I don't know who makes them a specialist. I guess they just print it on their card that they're a color specialist. But watching them color hair, I wondered where they got their specialties from. Because it was really scary. And half of them don't even know what color the canvas is they start to paint. And a client will come in and they say, I want it to be as light as you can get it and I don't want any orange. And I watch them go in the back room and they just grab their 40 volume and ash and they mix it up and they put it on the hair. And then I would watch them every 15 minutes run over and open up the foil and look and go, oh, whew, thank God. <laughs> really? You should never even have to look inside the foil one time. If you made your formula right, you should know exactly what's going to happen inside of there. And they don't even pay attention. They don't even know if it's going to turn red or orange or which one, so they just grab their ash. Or you should know exactly what lives underneath at each level because they're never going to go away. And it makes it really easy. So now I know if someone wants to be a level nine, I'm up against a banana today. Do they want banana hair or not? But at least I know exactly what I'm up against without guessing. So that is so, so important when it comes to hair color. Does that make sense? Know what level you're going to take the client to. Then you'll know what color you're dealing with underneath. And from there, you can start creating your formulas. And that will really help you. You also said you use that to enhance colors. And I really do too. Once I know this, if I have a client that comes to me, and she says, I've been to every salon on Ventura Boulevard, and I want red hair so bad, and every time I get it red, in two weeks it's orange. And I hate orange hair. All I want is red. I watch the hairdressers again in my salon that called them color specialists, and I'd watch them look through my book, and they would choose the one that's the reddest looking color in my swatch book, and they're going to grab red concentrate and squirt red in it and just make it as red as they can get. But see, they used a level 7 red because it looked like the brightest, prettiest red. And they put red mix in it. But see, at level 7, the hair's orange underneath. So no matter how much red you put in your formula, it's always going to be a red copper. If they want red, red hair, make them a level 5, where red lives underneath. It will turn red. It will stay red. Maybe it's a little deeper if you want, if you want some lighter pieces in it. Then put level 8 red highlights in it. But if you make the base of the formula where red lives underneath, it will stay red the longest. Make sense? So look where the colors are that you're going to. If they really want really bright copper hair, level seven's a really good place to go because it will stay copper the longest. Okay? Now also on the wheel, colors that touch each other around the wheel complement and they enhance. So what I mean by that, let's say I have a client that I come in and I do make her a redhead. 
because she wants red hair, but she wants highlights and lowlights and all this movement through her hair, okay? So based on her skin tone, and that's a whole nother class, because we do classes that actually complement people's fa facial features, their eyes and their skin, kind of like clothing. You all, we all know what colors look good on us and don't look good when we're getting dressed, and how come some people can wear a color, and if you put that color on you, it looks horrible, right? And that, that's a class called Color Analysis, and it's really an interesting class if you guys could ever take classes on it to help you learn what complement. And it's the same thing with hair. It's very important that you put the colors on that complement, because I'll see people come into the salon and they'll have a picture and they'll say, I want this color, and the hairdresser will make them that color, but it's not a very good color for their skin. <coughs> but they gave them what the client wanted. <laughs> And it's real important as a hairdresser to be able to say, you know, I know you like that color, but with your skin and eyes, I think this is going to look a little bit better. Let me show you. Because that's what they come for to see you for, is your professionalism and getting the right colors. So let's say I have a client that comes in and I make her a redhead, but she wants highlights and lowlights through her red hair, right? And she has rich chocolate brown eyes and really golden skin with freckles. So that tells me she's warm, okay? So I'm going to use the warm side of red, which is red coppers, not the cool side, which is red violet. And I'm going to do warm highlights or low lights. So if I use a level 5 red, I could do the lightest red highlights or the lightest orange highlights or the lightest red copper highlights. And I could do darker red or darker red copper or copper low lights. What I don't want to do is get yellow highlights next to a red. It doesn't complement. Does that make sense? Yeah. It doesn't look good. It looks like hooker hair. <laughs> Go to Vegas. But you know what? I'm in airports every day. I fly all over the world and sometimes I see these hairstyles and I'm like, my God, who did that to them? What were they thinking? You know? And it's really important. You know, we're Jay Beverly Hills, so we create runway hair, beautiful, glamorous, gorgeous red carpet hair. So for me, it's about inspiring hair artists how to create beautiful, beautiful looks that complement and enhance the hair and make it look as nice as you can possibly get it. And so if you learn to work with this wheel and use the colors that complement, use the colors that enhance, go directly across every time, whatever color line you have, as long as they make a blue, a green, a blue-green, a violet, and all of those bases, you'll be able to lighten hair and not fight the tones that you don't want to see. And hair color starts to become pretty predictable and easy. Nice when it comes to hair color. And to be able to get the tones that you want to see. Um, does that help you understand this color wheel a little bit better? Yes. Yeah? Awesome. I love the color wheel now. It, it made me a lot of money. It will make you a lot of money. You can make a lot of money doing hair. But you've got to be professional and you've got to stay focused. You know, when you graduate, and you get out into the salons, nationally right now, 80% of the hairdressers that do hair only make 20% of the dollars in our industry. 20% of the hairdressers out there make 80% of the money. Only 20% of them. Professional they really are and how they work. And it's so important. And people will always come up to me and say, how do you raise your prices? Or how do you charge this and that? By your work is the best way to do it, by going to education, by making yourself the best hairdresser you can. Because the ones that don't make the money, I remember a few of them in my salon. They're the ones that complain, they're never busy, they never go to a class. They know everything, but they make nothing. <laughs> Anything to better their career. And it changes always technology. So it's really important to stay at the top of your game when you graduate. For me, hair color, it's really changed in our industry because when I started doing hair in the 80s, we were so busy with hair color, I couldn't even keep up with the clients. And if I ran out of a tube of color, I would call the salon across the street and say, hey, it's Max, do you have a level 5 red? I just ran out. They would send their assistant over and bring me color. Nowadays, people don't even talk to the salons next door because they think they're their competition. And what's happened is the salon's not the competition. It's a grocery store counter now because they make hair color on grocery store counters. They used to not make that stuff back then, but now it's our professional brands that are making non-professional hair color. 
and it has the same name and they get a celebrity endorse it and they put her on the box or on the TV commercial. Do you think Heather Locklear does her own hair at home out of a box? <laughs> Come on. But you know what? In middle America they do. They really do. And because the box has the same name on it, the brand, they think it's the same stuff we use in the salon. And it's not. They even do commercials on TV and say it's a peroxide free hair color. But what they don't tell you is it's loaded with ammonia. <laughs> Who cares? Peroxide doesn't hurt the hair. It's the ammonia that's in the color. And through the FDA, they can sell hair color on TV and say it's completely ammonia free as long as it's less than 10% ammonia. Wow. On professional line that has more than 3.5%, and that's actually quite high. So they can have three times the amount of ammonia that we use in a salon and say there's nothing in it on TV. But look at the hair, it looks like a fuzzy dry helmet. <laughs> right? And you can't get that stuff out of the hair. <laughs> Shave it. There's nothing going to take it out. Because they want it to work at home. They want it to cover. And it makes it really hard for us. And then the hair color took a huge dent in the hair color market. Now they're even making highlight, low light clones? Yes. Yeah. Right. Someone try it. <laughs> what a mess their hair's going to be. But it's really sad because it's taken a huge dent into the professionalism of the market. And now, 83% of the population does their hair at home out of a box. Yeah. Globally. Globally. 83% of the population. That's only 17% going to the salons now to get their hair professionally colored. And now I can walk into a salon that has a hairdresser that's very talented and has went to many classes and has been doing hair 20 years. And I can walk into their salon on a Friday and they have gaps in their books. And they're not even book solid. And they're sitting in their chair hoping they get a walk-in. And they've been doing hair for 20 years and they're good. And it makes me wonder, oh my gosh, where are the students going to get their clients? How do we get people away from the box? How do they even know the difference? And it's professional companies doing it. Now they own our beauty supply companies. So when we buy combs and brushes, they use the money to make another commercial on TV and take our money away from us. It's not very fair, is it? <laughs> so for me, I wanted to create something a little different and color technology really started changing about 20 years ago. I mean, hair color is pretty amazing when you think about it. Wella went on the market in 1898. Can you believe hair color is over 100 years old? That is so cool. But it's way different than how we used to use hair color and the color that my mother used when I was a kid. And the technology changed. But think about these color lines. Some of these color lines have been around for 50 years. Look at Majorelle by L'Oreal. It was a great color line. I learned how to do color with that stuff. But it's old. <laughs> and they can't pull it and reformulate it because it's in 252 countries. And it works. So they're not going to reformulate, re reformulate it and do something different. About 15 years ago, 20 years ago, new brands started to pop up with new technology that was translucent color, that was shiny color, that was soft, that reflected light, that was totally different the way they mixed it. And you'd see companies come up like Alpha Parf and Daveness and all these really unique lines. And I fell in love with them. They were so cool and they're so different. And L'Oreal knew that their Majorelle was kind of passe, so they really quickly came out with Enoa, a translucent line, because that's what everything was leaning to. And if you think about the grocery store counters, you can't get translucent soft natural color in a box. All of it is very opaque and it's very matte. So I wanted to create a brand that would give us that translucency but also would be able to make opaque color if we needed to or we needed to match it and tap into the best technology I could in the world. So um, when I met with Juan Juan, my first conversation with him was more about getting products for for my distribution and um, because I knew his products weren't anywhere and then I asked him I said wow you have everything you've got blow dryers curling irons brushes products where's your hair color <laughs> he said well actually I started the project once and he said it fell through and I just haven't found the right person Ooh, really <laughs> and we spent the day together and after uh, one day with him 
we, we talk about a week later and I took the position. How many of you have ever been to a color factory where they make hair color? There's not too many in the United States. There's uh, one that I know of in the New England area, but um, I wouldn't use them to make my color. Um, but there's factories all over the world that make hair color, okay? So, let me tell you a little bit about how hair color is made. Um, factories that make hair color, that's what they do. They make hair color. And it's kind of like if you go to um, a brewery when they're making beer and you see the great big vats. That's what the color's made in, okay? So let's say, um, let's say you won the lottery and you had all the money in the whole world, like millions and millions of dollars. And you said, you know what, I'm going to start my own color line because I can when you have the money to, okay? So you start doing research and you go to different factories to make color because you want to find the factory you want to make your color for you. Because see these big brands out there that we, we know of, they don't own the factory that makes their color. They own the brand, they own the company, but they use a factory that makes hair color to fill their color for them. That's what factories do. Do your research and you start going to factories. The first thing that they usually make you do, whichever factory you go to, is you have to sign a waiver right when you go through the front door because that day they're filling somebody's hair color and it's confidential. So then they'll give you a hairnet, of course, and all of your stuff so you can go on the tour and they take you through the facility. And, um, when you get back there, you're going to see whose color they're making that day. And you're like, oh, wow, now I know where they make that. <laughs> and um, they're feeling it, and they're doing it. And then they're going to, after they take you through the whole thing, they're going to take you to a room around a table with a bunch of people. And they're going to say, okay, now you want to make hair color? How many colors do you want in your color line? Did you think about it? Do you want 100 shades? Do you want 110 shades? How many shades do you want? Let me show you the shades we make. And they open a big book. These are our naturals, these are our ashes, these are our golds, these are our reds. Which ones do you want? And then how big do you want to make your tube and what kind of a box so you're different than everybody else? It's called private label. <laughs> and so you'll get this factory that makes maybe five brands and all of them, the levels run very close, similar. They're the same. Then you'll get a factory over here that makes four or five brands and they're a half level lighter than that, all of those over there. Then you get a factory over here that makes four or five brands and they're half level darker. Then you get hairdressers and say, do you guys have a comparison chart? How can you compare it? They're not exactly the same because their levels are off because of what factories they're coming from. But what was more shocking to me is that all the color that's in there, whatever factory you're coming from, the pigment's really the same thing from brand to brand to brand. And see, the last color line that I helped make 20 years ago, there was four of us. That's what we did. We chose the colors off the book that we thought would be the best ones to put into our, our brand. And we wrote a manual around it. But it was just hair color. And then when I got out and started teaching it, the hairdressers asked me so many crazy questions. Are your reds going to fade like everybody else's? Are they going to be really vibrant and whole? Are you going to be able to lighten the hair and never get orange or brass? Is it going to be shiny and soft and silky and rebuild my hair structure? And all I could ever say was, well, it's hair color. Come on. <laughs> and I started thinking about it, I was like, wow, why isn't someone really addressing the needs of a hairdresser and making these things? And I started writing formulas and I presented them to my last boss and she said, Max, the color's out, we're doing fine, leave it alone. Okay. So I wanted to make my own color line, so uh, for the last 10 years I started working on my own formulas. I just didn't know where I was going to get the money to do it. And then I met Juan. And it was the perfect thing. You see, he was a cutter. If you go to one of the salons in Beverly Hills, they're departmentalized. You either cut or you color. You don't get it. And so he was a cutter. He didn't do color. Lucky Max. <laughs> so when I sat down with Juwan, the most important thing to me first was I told him, I said, if you're going to have me just go choose the shades off of their swatch book and make another color line, I don't want to do it. I already did that. And if it's not going to be different than anything else, but it's just going to have a different logo on it and a different size box, but it's going to work like every other color brand, I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'll stay doing what I'm doing. He said, it's your baby. You do what you want with this. So the very next day, I booked Joanne and I tickets to Italy. <laughs> and we went to Italy. Yay! And that's where we started our project. Um, we went to many different factories because I wanted to see how different factories work. Then we went to the factory that I wanted to make our color. And I'm, he's a people person, so I was hoping he would like him, and I'm glad he did. <laughs> we ended up with the factory that I wanted. 
Um, this factory is amazing because it's one of the only factories in the world that the technology is all computer and digital. So most factories, like the raw pigment, when they put the pigment in, it's done in manually into the big vats. This, it's infused in through machines and it never even hits the air. It goes right into the thing, kind of like Goldwell's old canisters work when they do color. But what it does is it creates a pharmaceutical grade micromolecule that's the smallest in the world. And it's so tiny that we actually can get our color pigments inside the hair without even opening the cuticle 10 degrees. That's incredible because then we can close it a lot easier and we can create some very, very shiny, silky hair color. And it's amazing that we can do that without blowing the cuticle wide open. Color lines that are 40 years old, lift at 30 degrees. You can never get it closed completely. So there, and then you talk about grocery store color. No wonder it looks like a fuzzy dry broom. It blows the cuticle open 45 degrees, turns it to straw. You can't close that. So it makes a big difference in the technology in hair color. So the factory we use is incredible with their pigments. So we were able to do different things. We work with lower developers. We work with lower <laughs> alkalinity. And it makes a big difference in hair color. So today I'm going to talk a lot about pH and those kinds of things. If you guys remember your pH scale and how that kind of works. And I'm going to talk about how we actually created this color. So the first thing after we had the meeting with the people and we got our tour. That's exactly what they did to Joanna and I too. They got us up to the table and they said, so how many colors are you going to do in your color line? Let me show you the colors we make. Which ones do you want? And I said, give me the book. And they gave me the book and I closed the book and I said, I don't want any of them. And I think they thought I was crazy. I think maybe Juwan thought I was crazy too. <laughs> I don't want any of these. We make the best color in the world. Look at the brands we have. And I said, exactly, that's why I'm here. But ours isn't going to be anything like those. We're going to start from scratch. So what I actually did was started my project a week later um, in Milan. And I went to a factory that makes swatch books. And that's all they do is they make swatch books. And they make, gosh, almost every swatch book I've ever seen. I had no idea how many color lines really exist in the world. There's probably 150 color lines that aren't even in the United States. That many brands. I was so fascinated by all the books while they were working on mine. I was looking through every color book out there, wishing I could buy a tube of each one to try it because there were so many different ones and I love hair color. But what we did was we went into a room where they make swatch books. And I don't know if you guys have ever looked really closely at swatch books sometimes, but if you pick one up and you look at one of the shades in a swatch book, you can see lots of different colors in it. That's how they do it because they do it through synthetic hair. So there's like walls that are, it's almost, it looks like thread. There's spools and spools and spools of all these different colors. So they'll take a color and they might, one shade might take three, three different colors, one might take eight. And they put them together and they put them on a machine that spins them and then it comes out on a little thing. And then there's this little square um, box. It's about this big where the lighting's perfect in it. And they'll put it underneath the light and they'll say, is that what you want, Max? So we started with one end to what I call one end. And they would spin it and then they would hand it to me. I'd say, no, it's a little too dark. No, it's a little too light. No, it's a little too blue. No, it's a little too this. Spin it, spin it, spin it until you get it right. Until we did all 88 shades. So every one of my shades are completely different than anything that they had in the factory because once we made the book, the book went to the color factory and they had to make every single tube match the shades in the book. A year and a half later, it took me a year and a half to make this color line. We had something new and we had some new technology that's incredible and we have them patented. So if someone goes to that factory to make hair color, they will not show them our book and choose any of the shades that we have. So they are exclusive. So. Um, this is our color book. And this is what we made in Italy. Okay? And I'm going to go through all the different shades that we have for you, and then we're going to take a break. When you open up the color book, the first thing is we have a level finder. It's so important, you guys have probably learned this, that we have to determine their natural level when we start to do hair color. And again, don't do hair color like they did in my salon. I would watch them. They're color specialists. And they would come out of the back room and they would look like this at a client. Oh, she's a six. <laughs> and go start mixing the color. And she looked like a six. She was almost a six, but not quite. So when they formulated her as a six, it came out brassy. Because she was actually a five, and five has more warmth in it. 
So it's really important when you do natural levels that you always go up to the client and look through the head and look for the darkest part on their hair. Because the darkest part is what's always going to hold the warm tones that you want to eliminate when you're trying to neutralize hair color. So look through the dark, look, look through their hair. And usually it's darker in the back up underneath, but I have seen people dark on, darker on top. So do look through the whole head and kind of fan these out and slide them into the root. And look which is darker. Is their hair or is the swatch? And they won't land on them exactly every single time. And if they're anywhere in between, always formulate them for the darker. So we can control that warmth we don't want to see. Always formulate them for the darker. I'll have people even call me and she'll say, well, Max, she was between a 5 and a 6. She was like almost a 6, like a 5.75. <laughs> There's no points in hair color. Don't make it that hard. There's 5, 6, 7, 8. It's that easy. And if she's almost a six, and you formulate her as a six, you're almost gonna get the color you wanted. Almost doesn't work. Not when you're doing hair. Get it right the first time. So if you have any doubt, formulate them for the darker, okay? Then, once you know what their natural level is, what level do they wanna be? That's the next step. So our first step is determining the natural level. Then the next one is what level do they wanna be? I didn't say what color do they wanna be. At this point, I don't even care what color they want to be. I don't want to know what level they want to be. Because if I know what level they want to be, I know the answer to my third one. What's the remaining pigment underneath at the level I'm going to take them to? We call it the remaining pigment contribution. Some companies call it underlying pigment. Some people call it raw pigment. To me, I call it remaining pigment because it's the remaining pigment in the hair at the level we, left it, we lifted them to. So if I lift someone up to a seven, what's left is orange. So your third one on here is what is the remaining pigment at the level I'm taking them to? So now I know what color my canvas is and I'm getting ready to play hair color. The next one, do they have any gray in their hair? You have to determine if they have gray in their hair because that's so important. And then after that, which developer I'm going to use to get my job done. And if you follow our five steps, you get predictable hair color. So it makes it really, really easy. So that's why this comes out of the book. So you can actually go over and fan it and your steps are right there. When you open it up, the next thing you're going to see is the founder of our company, Juwan Juwan, who I've been speaking of. And that's him. And our company's commitment to you as hairdressers on what we want to do. And then you're going to open it up and you're going to see our five steps the, what I just went over again everything you need to know with how to do our hair colors right there on this front page it'll show you exactly if I lift someone to a six that I'm dealing with red orange that I need blue green to neutralize it if I bring someone to nine it's going to be yellow I'm going to need violet to neutralize it so it shows you exactly what you need to grab then underneath it shows you each one of our developers then on the bottom colors okay so one thing is our company has grown really fast in the uh, 10 years that it's been on the market, the, the products. The color, like I said, it, it, it just, the color was just released a year and a half ago. So I started this project a little over three years ago. It took me a year and a half to make it, and then we started launching it around the world a year and a half ago. Um, we're huge international. So one of the things I had to take into consideration is I would get phone calls from our distributors from different areas and they'd say, Max, when you make the color, it needs to not have letters. Like some companies have R for red and N for natural and that kind of stuff. They said in Europe, we have different languages. So if you put letters on there, no one's going to use your color. You need to do numbers. Calls from our distributors in the United States, they say, oh, no, 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 Max, if you do numbers, it's confusing. We need to have letters on it. I said, oh my God, it's really not that hard. So I decided, let's do something different. We have both letters and numbers on it. So if you look at our swatch chart, on one side you'll see letters, the other side you'll see the numbers. Down here you'll see both letters and numbers. If you pick up a tube, there's one down in here. If you pick up a tube on the box, it has both letters and numbers. And if you look at the tube itself, it has both letters and numbers on it. So if you use the letters, learn the numbers. <laughs> and it'll make you understand the color really, really easy if you can get one of those out. Okay? We have our N series. Our N is for natural. <laughs> it means brown. And the letter N or the number zero. So I'm just going to show you how you can see it has both letters and numbers on there. On both of them. So um, we have our natural series. 
Now, a lot of brands out there, what I've noticed is they make the natural series and then they make double naturals and ends. And the reason they do that is because it's harder to cover some of the grays and they give you double dye loads of browns. Well, I didn't want hairdressers to have to buy 20 shades of brown. And I know the lighter that you get, the harder it is to cover gray. In fact, I don't know very many color lines out there that will cover gray at level nine and especially at level 10. With our color line, we make one through six in, and then after six, we don't even make seven in or eight in, because they don't work, we make seven in in, and eight in in. And then once we get lighter than a level eight, we're the first color line in the world to make a triple dye load of pigment. We cover gray at level 10 and level nine now, for the first time. So we have a nine, and I couldn't name it nine in, in, in. It wouldn't fit on the box. So they told me you're gonna have to put only the letters or the numbers, one or the other on the box. And I said, no, 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 I'll just switch it. So instead of calling it NNN, an I is really skinny. <laughs> so I call it 9NI and 10NI. Whenever you see an I anywhere in our book, that means it's a triple dye load of pigment. So we have a lot of pigment in them. So we have lots of uh, different colors in here that have eyes on them, okay? So that's our natural series. And our natural series actually is a cool natural. We say it has a violet base because the easiest way for me to explain it, a perfect brown has three yellow pigments, two red pigments, and one blue pigment. And that's a really rich, perfect brown. Our natural series, the whole line of the natural series, has only one yellow, one red, and one blue. So it's still brown, but red and blue make violet. And they're heavier pigments than the yellow pigment, so it's a cool brown. It leans towards violet, but it's not purple, like the, a violet base, but it leans towards violet. It's a cool brown. So we're gonna tell you that our natural series is a violet base. So whenever you need to get rid of yellow, you know what you can use, your N series. We make a pure green series, which is ash, and it's green green. And I even have double dye loads in my greens. Then we made a blue base too, another ash. So I have blue to get rid of orange, and orange is so hard to get rid of that I double dye loaded most of those. We make a six double blue, a seven double blue, an eight double blue. We don't have problems with orange hair anymore. It works. And of course we made a blue black for you. Um, golds. We have a lot of gold and I love gold, and we make them levels four through 10, and we even have double dye loads of golds, like a seven GG and an eight GG and a nine GG, and they're really, bright, vibrant golds. We have our gold coppers, GC. We have our coppers, which are very intense. And at level seven, where orange lives, that's where I made three. We have a seven copper, we have a seven double copper, and we have a seven triple copper, seven CI, very intense. We have mahoganies, which are red violet. We have our violets, which are pure purple, because they don't have any yellow pigment. They're purple, purple. And I love the violets. And I really wanted to make a, a stronger violet base. And I wanted to make a purple black. For years, I'll have people that come in and they have like the hazel eyes and they have the eyes that I think purple black would look better than a blue black. And blue black's been around forever. And it was like a year and a half ago, Paul Mitchell just released a blue black. And I'm like, blue black's been around ever since I can remember. But why hasn't someone made a purple black? Well, one reason is purple actually lives at level three. So when you make a purple at a dark, dark level one, you couldn't see it because the, the black it camouflaged it. So I started mixing my colors when they were sending me prototypes and I actually one day mixed level one and level two together and made a level one and a half purple and it worked perfect. So you can do anything. The first color in the world to make a level one and a half. We have a one and a half violet and it's a purple black. And it is so pretty out in the light. And then I double or triple diluted all of our other purples. Now, you still have to understand this, how this works. Because we make this five triple diluted purple. Then I had a salon from Denver, Colorado that's using our color and call me and say, you know, I used your triple purple and it came out mahogany. And I'm like, okay, well, what'd you do? And they said, well, she was a level three. And I lifted her to a five because I used your five. I said, well, what lives underneath at level five? 
Red. red. What's red and purple going to make? Mahogany, honey. You got what you mixed. <laughs> right? It's not going to look purple. But maybe if I use a quarter of my formula, a level 5 green, so I can neutralize the red, and the rest of my formula is the level 5 purple, all you're going to see is purple in the hair. How much? Uh, one quarter of my formula neutralizing base. So when I'm lifting, I'll always use one quarter of my formula of the neutralizing base to eliminate that and the rest of my formula what I want to see. And you'll get some purple hair. And it works really good. <laughs> we have some different browns that are pre-blended. Um, chocolates and Mediterraneans. When I started doing hair, there wasn't such things. So we would make our own chocolates. If I had a client that wanted chocolate, I would use a good amount, like a level 5 chocolate. I would use a good amount of 5N, put some 5G in there to warm it up, and a little squirt of 5R to richen it up. And then the client would come back and say, you know what, last time it was just perfect. And I'm in the back room going, hmm. How much did I squirt in there? Scales for us for hair color. Thank God. Because it's accurate. And it's predictable. And especially when you start making really unique formulas. Like if I'm doing a formula where it's three quarters 5GC and one quarter 5C because I wanted to just make it a little bit different. How am I going to do that if I have one client that actually has a little bit larger head than everybody else? And I ran out of color and I have one little teeny section back here. How are you going to make it match exactly 100%? You're going to weigh the same amount? If you're in my salon, it'll be the last day you work there. Yeah. Because that's a waste of hair color. But if you have a scale, and I did 30 grams of one color and 10 grams of the other, I can do 15 and 5. I can do 7 and a half and 2 and a half. I can break it down and it will come out exactly the same and I don't waste my product. So I'm a huge fan of scales. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we get into formulating, but I think it's really important. So we made two different browns for you. We have a chocolate one. It's a gold red violet base. It's really rich. And what I noticed in the years that chocolate started coming out in the late 80s, what I noticed on some people, they look a little bit too warm, and people say, well, it looks more like a red chocolate, not chocolate. And everything to everybody's always red. So I decided I would make a chocolate without any red in it. So instead of a GRV, gold, red, violet, my Mediterraneans are just gold, violet base, pre-blended. There's no red in it. So these are more of your... Uh, cappuccino, cocoa, or espresso looking browns. They're beautiful. And we have our Mediterranean series. I love red hair. So my reds have a lot of red pigment. They're either double or triple diluted all the way up to a double red at level 8, a triple red at level 7, and our reds hold really, really good. In fact, I got a text Two days ago, the last color line that I had, that I was working with, one of my educators for that color line that I had trained years ago, I haven't seen him in a long time, but anyway, I was um, in the Omaha, Nebraska area, and that's the area where she taught. I guess she saw this color line out, and she actually carries this color line in her salon now. She didn't know it was me who created it. And then she was at a program I was at, and she came up and she said, Max, I'm like, oh my God, Heather, I haven't seen you forever. Are you? And anyway, she sent me a text, and she said, even when I try to make the reds fade in your color line. I can't! <laughs> she said, I'm like, yay, I told you. <laughs> so um, that's, that's really made me feel good. I think it was yesterday afternoon. I was like, oh, that's a nice text to get. Um, but our reds are very vibrant, and they do hold really well. And maybe someone can go red today with our reds. Um, I make a lot of different blondes. I'm in Southern California, and they all want to be like Lady Gaga. And that's <laughs> not a color. But um, I made a lot of blondes, and we have a lot of pigment in them, so we can get rid of the orange tones and the, the golden tones, and you get very, very natural, uh, beautiful blondes. And so we'll go over the blondes after we take our break and how they work. The mixers. Um, these two look the same, and they should because they're pigment-free, but they're totally different. One is clear, and it has no ammonia, and the other one is clear with ammonia. It's a booster, and they work differently. Then I make a yellow mixer and a red mixer. Yellow reflects light and it adds luster and sheen. So next time you get someone who wants even like a two in, you can put a quarter of your formula yellow because at level two you can't make gold hair. But what yellow will do will make it like the richest dark brown you've ever seen and it reflects light and makes it super shiny. Even in my light light blondes in Sweden, they like cool, they call them cold blondes there, but cool, like they're really uh, pastel, um, 
uh, the beiges or the more platinum looking. They're very cool tone blondes. And one of my educators, actually, she was an educator for L'Oreal for 20 years. She's an amazing educator. We, we were doing each other's hair in our class when I was training him. And she's really, really light blonde, but it was lacking shine and condition. So I said, put just a little squirt of yellow into her formula. And she said, oh, God, no, don't put yellow in. I hate yellow hair. I want it cool. I said, it's not going to make it yellow at that level. It's going to add shine. And now she's like my number one fan of yellow because <laughs> she understands how it works. But we needed a yellow mix. People who want red love red. If you notice, I didn't make a green mix or a blue mix anymore. I don't like rock. So we don't need it. We did a really good job in our green and blue line that if you formulate it right, you're never going to have it. And what I've noticed is companies that make a green mix or a blue mix, that tube lasts about a year in the salon. In fact, it's got black grit around the lid because it's not used that much. Or when I see it used, I see it misused. They try to make green hair out of it. It doesn't work. It's not what they're for. They're concentrates. But I did make something very unique, is I made brown mixers. Now the last color line that I worked with, we made a brown mix. But they only made one. And it was the only company in the world that had a brown mix. But you notice how I told you some brands make your ends, then they make the double ends? Why make double ends? Why didn't they just make a brown that you could add to your ends to make them browner? One tube instead of ten to sell the hair dressers, to make it easier. So even though I did increase my dye load the lighter I got, I made brown mixers so I can actually make more opaque hair when I want to or make more matte coverage. And I made two. I made a warm brown and a cool brown because there are some people who everything's too warm on them. They don't like it. So I made both. And the difference is our warm brown has three yellows, two reds and a blue. And our cool brown has one yellow, one red and one blue pigment in it. And they're brown mixers and you can add them to anything to give you opacity. And that really does help. And the last page, these colors, I love them. <laughs> um, they are our fashion tones. Um, they're, now, if you'll notice, all of these have a black heading on them because what they are is they're our permanent color line. They're oxidative tint, okay, so they need a developer. Do you guys know how these kind of colors work? Have you ever worked with them? I'm sure you have, right? Direct dyes. What's the difference between a direct dye and oxidative tint? Isn't that one a stain? Very good, a stain. But they are stains. Direct dyes are a pre-oxidized color molecule. Okay? And they come out of either the tube or the bottle or the jar or whatever they're in, the color they're going to be. Okay? And if you get them on your fingers, you're going to have that color fingers. They stain. It's like Kool-Aid on a white t-shirt. You can't get it out. Now, one of the first questions I always get about these kinds of colors are, you're going to fade like everybody else's. Well, then you've got to understand how direct dyes work. If you have a hair strand right here, right, and there's our oxidative tint, permanent color, goes inside the hair strand, right? Forms a polypeptide chain within here, and we change the structure of the hair permanently. It doesn't mean it's permanently going to be that color forever because all colors fade. But you permanently change the structure of that hair, and when it grows, you're going to get a line of demarcation because that will never go back to natural. You permanently changed it. That's why they call it permanent color. Okay, semi and demis. Demis go slightly under the cuticle, swell up. They'll last about four to six weeks, and then they'll fall right back off. That's your demi permanence. Semi permanence land on the top of the cuticle. They're usually your colored foams, colored mousses, colored shampoos, colored conditioners. They last anywhere from one to five shampoos, again, depending on what you put it on. And a direct dye, these guys, they're a pre-oxidized color molecule that's a lot bigger than the molecules in oxidative tint. So what happens is you have to pre-lighten the hair first when you put these on right. We have to bleach the hair first so you can see them. So you bleach the hair. Well, bleach actually lifts the cuticle about 30 degrees. So now you've got it up here. Okay? So imagine if I had a door that could only open 30 degrees, and that's all the further it opens. But on the other side of the door was a 700-pound dude. And I said, oh, just come on into my class and have a seat. Come on in. I'm sorry the door can't open, but come on in and have a seat. Even if I'm standing behind him, trying to push him into the room, his fat might wrap around the door. And that's exactly what happens to direct dyes. This molecule wraps around the cuticle, 
and it stains the heck out of the cuticle, but it doesn't get inside the cortex. The world is it ever going to hold? And then hairdresser goes, are yours going to fade like everybody else's? You don't understand what a direct dye is then. If you could get them to go into the cortex, then you would have something really unique, wouldn't we? Then we have companies like Wella who came out with magma. And Goldwell came out with illuminates. Did you notice they're always reds? Where are all these other colors? So when I went to the factory that's making these for me, it's not the one in Italy because they don't make direct dyes. I went to the best factory that makes direct dyes. They make Provana, they make everybody's. And I went into there and they, they did the same thing. They said, which colors do you want? And they showed me their book and I said, give me the book. I said, I don't want any of them. These are the colors I want. I already had them done in Italy. And I want these right here. And they said, oh God, I don't know if we can make those. And I said, well, if you want my business, you'll make them. <laughs> it took them a year and a half. In fact, these aren't even out yet. Is that in Mexico? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. They're in Gu Guadalajara. And, um, I have a great relationship with them because they made my last color brand. <laughs> and I went to them to make these because they do. They make, they make almost every direct dye I know of. And they're good at it. It took them a long time to get my pink. That color of pink. Guess what? It's done now. And it's pink. And it's awesome. They're not available yet because they're being filled right now as we speak. They're going to be, we're just releasing them in January, but I'm really excited. But we've already done our first fashion campaigns and our models and our photo shoots. And I have my prototype tubes that I use to do the color. But then I really thought about these two. When I sat down with the guy, the chemist there, I said, how come no one's ever created these where you can actually mix them like a tint? Like the magmas and like the luminance. Why can't you lift and deposit at the same time? And you know what he said to me? No one's ever asked me to. So that tells me that the people who go in to make hair color don't even do hair. They own these big companies, but they don't do what you and I do. They've never one day step, stood behind a chair doing hair. They own big companies, and that's why they're like, well, which ones are your number one moving shades? We'll choose those. First hairdresser that actually went into a color company to make hair color and gave him challenges in Italy. Then I gave this guy challenges too. He said, you know what? I think I can do it. It may take me a couple years. So right now we're going to release them like regular, t regular direct dyes and we're releasing them in a retail form because I know they fade. And I thought about it. These clients are one-time clients. A lot of these people don't come to get their hair done to the salons. First of all, most of the people who want these colors have no money. They don't drive a Rolls Royce. They drive a skateboard. <laughs> The lady with the money doesn't want any of these shades. The people who want these shades have skateboards or they're beauty school students. We love them, and me too. I want them very often. I've been doing hair 30 years, and how often do I get a client that comes in that wants pink? There's not that many. And we have to work so hard because we have to pre-lighten the hair, and then we put these colors on the hair, and we know they're going to fade. So then I thought about it. What if a mother... What if, what if they go to the salon one time and they see these shades and, and the, the young guy says to mom, please, 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 I want a purple mohawk, please. They've got the prettiest purple I've ever seen. She says, okay, today I'll let you do it. So she pays for you guys, you do the hair and you have to lighten the hair and then you have to put the curler on and you charge them maybe $150 and they leave with the purple hair and the kid's happy. And guess what? In two weeks, it's going to fade. It is going to fade. All colors Bless fade you. that are direct dyes. Bless you. So... Two weeks later, when it starts to fade, he says, Mommy, 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 can I go back and get more purple in the hair? And Mommy's going to say, No, 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 no way. That was $150. Here's 20 bucks. They sell it at Hot Topic. Go buy purple there. So I had to really think about it. I'm like, How are we going to move these colors? I mean, really? Emerald green? That's really going to be a number one seller. Right? And I, you think I'm done with these shades? I want Juwan to give me more money so I can create other cute colors in the future. So I had to really think about this. We're putting them in a retail form. You can't get them in a beauty supply. You can't get them anywhere but a salon only that carries J. Beverly Hills. So now when the client comes in and the mother pays to have their kid get their hair done, you can send them home with that purple in a retail and it's really nice and they can maintain it. And then by the time they run out of their purple, they're going to need to come to the hairdresser anyway because they're going to need to pre-lighten that hair and they need your help. So we're releasing them in a retail form for the salons. And they're being filled, like I said, right now. They should be available in January. And um, 
In the same time, my chemist is still trying to get them to work with developers. And right now, he can get the dark, the, the bottom three, well now work with the 20 volume, the first in the world. And he believes he'll be able to get them all to work. It may take me another year, year and a half for him to get them done. But when he gets them done, we will have the first direct dyes in the world that will work like oxidative tint and maybe it won't fade. And that's when we get it done. Let's take a break so you guys can get some coffee, use the restroom.